Welcome everyone to our course on cosmology where we're going to be looking at the issues that are literally the size of the universe, as big as you can imagine. We're going to start off with two fundamental observations or principles that actually determine most of our cosmological thinking. One is the principle of homogeneity or uniformity and this is saying that basically the universe is the same everywhere. The second, which we'll come to in the next video, is the principle of the um, expanding universe, which comes from redshifts and distances. But for this video, we're going to talk about what's often called the extended Copernican principle, the principle that every bit of the universe is the same, nowhere is special. I guess this came out of history. In history, people always thought that wherever they lived was special. You, my village is the centre of the universe. And eventually, people got better at exploring and realised that didn't make sense. But then their country was the centre of the universe. And then the Earth was the centre of the universe. And then the solar system was the centre of the universe. And time after time, we felt that where we are is special and being proven wrong. So you want to say that we're no place special, but you and I know we're both special. And, you know, clearly where we are here is seems special to us and it's not like an average place in the universe as near as I can tell. Average place in the universe is going to be a lump of cold empty space. Yeah, so this principle of the universe is all the same seems pretty perverse because we know it's not the case locally. I mean where this picture here, um, the density is 20 orders of magnitude more than it is 100 kilometers above this place. That's pretty right. not the same. Okay, so Locally, clearly not the same. So let's go out a little bit and think a bit about yeah. this. So the idea isn't that everything's identical on small scales, but on big enough scales. So the question is how big? Maybe stars would be a good place. You look out at the night sky and you see stars in every direction. So maybe the universe is just full of stars uniformly spread all over the place. But already it doesn't look. I see the Milky Way here. And if I look at that with a, you know, a telescope, I'll realize that there's a billion stars and a tiny little piece there. So it's clearly not yeah. uniform there. Not uniform. That's different than here. Yeah, so that's the first failure of uniformity. Stars are not spread through the universe. They're grouped in clusters called galaxies. Right. About 10 to 11 of them in a typical galaxy with us in the outskirts of one. Okay, so that's a failure. And we know that this galaxy, not our own, is separated and there's not going to be anything really near it and then there'll be another one all on its own. So again... So maybe there's a uniformness that maybe the universe is just full of galaxies spread all oh, around so the place. Also, you think the galaxies will be uniformly distributed? Even though the stars are concentrated in galaxies, maybe the galaxies are spread around uniformly. So let's look at a map of the nearby universe. Yep, so we've got us in the middle, and we are in the local group, which is two big galaxies and a whole bunch of small ones, and there are other little groups around. But then we get a bit to the side, you start seeing a cluster, the Virgo cluster, which is an enormous number of galaxies. So clearly galaxies are not spread uniformly, they live in groups and clusters. So we're sort of on the outside of this metropolis, sort of in the suburbs of the Virgo cluster. Yeah. And so we're in a special place in the universe. We're on the edge of a cluster. But then there, there are voids, right? I've heard about these voids where there's almost nothing. So Yeah. I mean, uh, how about clusters? The clusters spread uniformly. Well, no. Yes, clusters are lined up. Here's an even bigger image. There's the Virgo. And then we've got Centaurus, Hydrocentaurus cluster and other clusters. So we get super clusters of clusters. And they're arranged in like strings or filaments neighborhood of clusters string around and once again so we haven't really found homogeneity yet okay yeah so this is going to look like a failed plan before you even started but if we just go to even bigger scale so one of the okay. biggest maps was the 2df galaxy redshift survey what they did was we are here and they did a wedge across the sky and measured the distance to a whole bunch of galaxies about over 200,000 of them and each blue dot here is a galaxy what are we seeing here? So this almost kind of reminds me of the foam on a cappuccino. So, yeah, I see little lumps and bubbles, but it's beginning to kind of look like when you look at a cappuccino from a long ways away, it just looks like white if, if you, uh, you know, don't mix up the coffee. So it's sort of maybe a hint that it's beginning to look like that. Yeah, so at every previous scale, we found things and they've been clustered. So stars are clustered, yep. galaxies, galaxies in clusters, clusters in superclusters. But superclusters don't seem to be clustered in well, hyperclusters or whatever we want to call them. So we're at a scale of about one to one and a half billion light years now. So we're getting pretty yeah. big. And we can see lumps that are maybe a hundred million light years across, but then there's another one and another one yep. another one. They're not seemingly lined up. And we can actually go to an even bigger scale still. Um, piggybacking off the same survey was a quasar survey. And quasars are so bright um, and so distant that we can extend out to 10 billion light years. Well, this is just a, a, a fly through of that and you can see the, the pattern here. 
Right, so it really is almost like a, a sponge or a spider web or something. So, yeah, but again, looking fairly uniform. Yeah. It fades out at the end. That's because you can't see any further. Okay. But if we now look at quasars. Ah, that's really looking boring. Uh, this is the stuff you work on, boring stuff like this. But I don't understand. That all looks pretty random. But then why, maybe we are special. We seem to be in a place there aren't any quasars. Yeah, the quasars don't like us. We're now looking on distance out to 12, 13 billion light years. And it is pretty uniform in different directions across the sky. But we do seem to be in a local hole. The quasars are avoiding us. And there's also an edge out here. Now, it could be that we are in a special place. And yep. it just is. This is the place that quasars hate. But more likely, what we're looking at here is an effect of time. Because oh. bear in mind, if we see a quasar over there, we're seeing it not as it is now, but as it was, well, in that case, about six billion years ago, because it's taken the light six billion years to reach us. So what this is actually telling us, we don't see any right at the edge here, because that's back when the Big Bang happened and there hadn't been time for them to form. Yep. And then there's a great era of quasars. So these are giant black holes eating the middle of galaxies and shining like crazy. But more recently, the black holes are still there, but they've eaten everything near them. Oh, so by so they stop shining. There's like this age of quasars, sort of analogous to the age of dinosaurs, and for whatever reason they've faded out. And so we are sort of at a special place in time, yeah. but not necessarily in space. But odds are if we actually lived on you know, that galaxy over there, we'd yep. see the same thing. We'd see a apparent hole around us because we're only seeing the things that are nearby recently, and there aren't many quasars around, and we'd see lots of quasars over here. So once again, it looks like special time, but one place in the universe probably is very much like another. That's convenient. Yes, it turns out to be a really powerful constraint on the cosmological models. The, the idea that, quite opposite of the old idea that we are the centre of the world, is that not only are we not in the centre, but nowhere is in the centre. Every place would see pretty much the same thing once you're on these scales of billions of light years. Yes, there are clusters and things on pathetically little small scale, like 100 million light years, but when you get up to the several hundred million light years, things really are uniform.